Okay, so this, this section is um, reviewing the, the Scrum, how we set up the Scrum, and, and, and I'll go into quite a lot of detail because it's obviously my wheelhouse, right? So, um, so firstly, just first piece is choosing the players. So obviously, kids, all the kids are different sizes, um, but what we really want to do, if we've got eight people in the Scrum, we want to try and get the type five, at least the front three, and four and five need to be the same. So one, two, and three should all be the similar kind of height. And four and five, obviously, a similar kind of height, just to create balance. And I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you why. So on here, for example, you've got one, two, and three. We want to be looking for this similar. I don't care about the width of the guys. But we want to get their body length similar. So from, from here, to here, we want them to be the same distance, same, same length, okay? Similarly, with the second row forwards, right? We want, they're gonna be taller generally, that's fine, maybe thinner, but we want them the same length, okay? So basically, from here, from backside, from the backside to the shoulders, we want them to be about the same height. Same thing here, same height. The reason for this is, and I'll sort of run this piece out, is they are not the same size. And I've come across this a lot over the years. Maybe your hooker is real short, it's got a short body, but then your, your tight head and loose head are maybe taller, okay? What happens then is, your second row forward has to stick his head in, and he has a shoulder here, at contact, but the other shoulder's not touching anything. There's a big space there. We can't have that space. We can't have that space there. Okay, that happens, that happens a lot. Similarly, obviously, you'll have a shoulder here, but there's these two shoulders not touching anything. There's a big space in the middle. Okay, so therefore you're pushing here. This guy's getting a shove forward. This guy's getting a bit of a shove forward. But this guy's not making it, he's not going to get any pressure. That's not happening. So we need to, that's the reason why we want to have same, same height. I would, I would prefer to go with slightly smaller guys in the front row, but them all being the same, and then use these, the taller ones of these in the second row. You know, um, I've even had, last couple of years with a men's team, me and Mike Thacker at second row. Works really well because we're similar height and weight. Um, and it just creates that creates that balance through the middle and what whatever we had a kid called Bori as a, as a Puerto Rican kid he's really short and we put him at hooker just because that, that's where he naturally looks like he should be but then we had you know maybe, maybe me and Mike Thacker at one and two and Bori was you know a good half a foot shorter than both of us so it caused a lot of problems so if we can get that going in the right direction, that, that makes things uh, um, a lot easier. So choosing one through three, same height, and then four and five, same height. Six, seven, and eight, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what their, <coughs> their height is, um, because the they're way that they're pushing, it doesn't need to be symmetrical. Um, so that, that's kind of point number one. Okay, so for, for this next section, we just want to talk about... Um, the the mentality uh, in general so what I, what we want to do is we want to get all eight men in the scrum to be pushing um even the hooker to a certain extent and the, well, i'll divide it up a little bit uh, later on in these this scrum stuff um so we're looking for an eight-man scrum that means that all people are engaged when i say all engaged i mean heads in pushing forward um i don't want to see really six seven and eight with the with their head popping out uh, early, we want to have the heads down, um, pushing through the middle of the scrum, so that we can actually win the scrum. I think that's a more positive mentality. So all engaged, all pushing forward, and then when we've won the scrum, then we can look at look around and see what's happening. If all heads are in, then you can see where the ball is. If the ball is obviously lost, then six six seven eight should be able to see that ball go back if it, if we're losing it. If we've lost it, that's fine. We've lost it, then we can bring our heads out and we can, we can protect what we need to protect. But if we have our heads down in general, we're gonna win more often than not if we do everything correctly. So all engaged, all pushing in the same direction, 
um, all doing the basics the same. Because if everything's the same throughout each line, so front row, second row, and back row, um, if everyone's doing the same thing, then there's going to be more stability. If there's more stability, we keep our, our shoulders and hips square, and there's more, more possibility for us to be driving um, simultaneously in the same, same direction. Um, and then the hooker, we want the hooker to be um, verbal, calm, and very clear. So if we need that, we need that hooker to be very verbal when they're setting up the scrum, but we also need them to be very clear in what they're saying and, and also at the same time calm, because there just need to be a certain amount of calmness um, um, to be able to to be able to win to be able to win that. Okay. So that, that's the that's the main part about the mentality of things. We want to be everybody doing the same thing, all engaged, all pushing, all got the basics correctly, but with a leader, and, and I'd like to designate that leader as the hooker. Uh, for all age groups, for any situation. So we've got an eight-man scrum that's being led from the middle and the front, okay? Okay, um, so what, what's the what's the basic idea of our scrum? Um, to keep it sort of very, very simple for you, um, we want a front row that's relatively agile to be able to bend at the hip and the knees. Uh, and I'll go into that in a few moments. So we want to, we want a front row that can bend correctly at the hip and the knees all the way through here. We want a coordinated second row. So second row is not just the four and five. We're talking about the flankers as well. Okay, we want them on the same page and moving in the same direction. Um, so they're synchronized, and we want those those especially on that side. We want them pushing that tight head through to be able to to separate their loose and their hook we want this tight head pushing getting pushed from him so we need a very very core strength strong tight head that doesn't mind getting his head pushed through um in between these guys so it's you got to have a bit of a, a bit of a strong kid tight head and we've got to have a flank and and four that are willing to do the work to push him through that hole um, but again, it's coming synchronized to start and then uh, fore and flank pushing the, the tight head through. Um, and, then, and then the coordination, right? So from the communication from hook to scrum half or vice versa when the ball's coming in. And then hook through the second. Then it comes to the eight. And then what's the communication with the scrum half and the eight? So it's a lot of communication from scrum half to hook, hook through second, is there a clear pathway? Eight man, what are you doing with your scrum half? All of that is, so it's scrum half, hook, seconds, eight, scrum half, go. So that the communication between all of that. So again, agile front row that can start low and tight, a coordinated second row that is synchronized and pushing a tight head through, and then good communication from scrum half to hook, hook to second, second to eight, and scrum half away. Okay. Okay. So, so for this one, I figure I'll do it this way. Um, so the TH um, is tight head, H is hooker, and LH is loose head. R stands for right foot, L stands for left foot, um, SH is scrum half. Okay, putting the ball in. So this is the, at the feet positioning for the setup at the, the scrum. So we need the hooker coming in, leading the way. They want to set up in this position. Okay, that front foot there, we'll call it the break foot. That basically that front foot out in front of them, right? Just foot slightly in front of the knee, right underneath the head, um, ass back, and then one foot also back, but nice and crouched, nice and low. So they're coming in like that, and they're putting that right foot forward, left foot back, that way so that when the scrum half feeds, it goes straight to that right foot, okay? Tight head prop has his left foot behind the hooker's right foot and his right foot forward, and then a loose head on the opposite side, a little different. He has it set up opposite, so he has his right foot next to the hooker's left foot or back foot, and his left foot forward. Because once the scrum is set, so you crouch, bind, that left foot of the loose head prop is going to go back. Okay, and I'll show you a quick screenshot of what it should look like once they're set.
Okay. So then as the scrum as the scrum half is putting that ball in and both feet are in all of the feet are in the right place now that uh, that right foot slightly forward still from the hooker is going to receive that ball and it's an easy transition from scrum half right foot and back through the second row okay obviously a tight head and loose head are doing their pushing they're both both feet together well not together but shoulder width apart but parallel with each other okay that that creates square hips for the loose and tight head forwards square hips means square shoulders square shoulders means we're going forwards Okay, so let me let me see if this one, if I get the message across with this one. Uh, there's something called biarticular lines, and um, so we can check that in a in a in a in a live situation just with a pole. If we have like a stick or like a flagpole from the from the corners, um, we can use that to to check this with the kids and demonstrate this line to them um, in the middle of scrums, right? And we can, or if you've got it on, you know, with a computer, you can just connect a, a straight line from from a certain, from basically the front of the foot to the head, and it's got to go through the knee. Um, so I'll, I'll show you that with, with this sort of, this little piece here. Um, but basically, it, it's getting all eight forwards in, in the correct body position to maximize their power. Uh, and how does, how, does that, how does that happen? So what, what works with the setup is to have everybody at 90 degrees. So 90 degrees, you've got a flat back, you've got thighs going up and down, and then you know, the, 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 the lower leg at a, a good angle. So you've got your front row, second row, eight man, all doing the same thing. When they set up the eight man's got a bit more flexibility with it, um, generally because they're probably the biggest guy, um, and they're at, at the back where they have to be theoretically the lowest. So that can't happen until they've engaged. So there's a little bit of flexibility with that, but basically you want to start with flat back, and then so it's got 90 degrees back uh, to thigh at the hip, and then we're aiming for something close to 90 degrees at the knee as well um, to, to begin with. But what we're doing here is this is this pink line represents that, uh, that bi biarticular line, basically the front of the foot through the knee to the head should all be just in one line. And you can demonstrate that live, like I said, with a pole. Um, afterwards, in video, you can show it just using a computer-generated line. Um, but you want everybody sort of doing a similar thing. You can see their head, knee, and front foot are all in a similar, similar line there, as you can see in the second row. So this is where you want everybody, more or less, that one line connecting, connecting the head, the knee, and the front of the foot, they should be all in line. This is a good, a bad example here. So you got the front of the foot, the knee, and then you basically got this kind of curve going on. We want a straight line, so that's wrong. Similarly, if they're too stretched out and they're fully extended, um, then that line goes across the back, right? And so, so then, then you've got someone getting, getting folded that way. Um, this one, they're getting folded this way. Whereas this one, it keeps a nice strong line, keeps it nice and strong all the way through. Another another way to uh, to to uh, to engage with this is, for example, um, let me do like a clock, and you've got 12, 11, 10, 9. Okay, so to, to start off your your engage is basically you want the thighs up and down, right? So the, the, the thighs are aiming for the 12, and then you've got your, your body going forward, and your legs going back, okay? Um, but then you can do this once you've engaged, 12, 11, 10, nine. Once you engage, those legs should be then going here. And then you've got your body and your legs. Okay, lower leg. So the thigh now, instead of it being a 12, your thigh should be aiming towards 11. So that's another way of doing it. Rather than saying 90 degrees, well, what's after 90? Is it 45? It's a little bit rough, but I think visually people can understand that a bit better. So maybe aiming to get your thighs at 12. Okay, and then once you're engaged, then you can get, so this is maybe pre-engage, right, before, so it's crouch, bind, set, I should use pre
preset, the better word to use. Preset and then set. That would be a better situation. But the objective is that that biarticulate line, the pink one I've shown you, is going through the head, through the knee, and through the front of the foot. That's what we want to be aiming for throughout the scrum at eight, second row, and front row, all being uh, being in the same kind of line. Um, and that, that can be measured, that can be looked at with a physical stick or, or in video you can, you can create a straight line on your TV screen and, and demonstrate that as well. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, for, for, the, for the main part of it really, I, and I think even if we get a bunch of other things wrong, if we get this piece right, um, we're, we're in a good, a good position. So it's more about the cadence, but really the movement of what we're doing to get to that cadence. So crouch bind, crouch bind set, is, is where we work, right? So what we want to do is we want to do crouch, bind, set, step, step. Okay, so crouch, bind, set, step, step. At most, step, step. We might even only do one, really. But that's just, if everybody's doing this, in that order, crouch, bind, set, step, step. It allows the guys, everybody, all eight of them, to shuffle if they need to, minimally. Really, in the way that we do this, we should probably only really need the front row to do any kind of step. And it, it'll be a step and a half step at most. Um, and the second row, if they do this correctly, they literally don't have to do anything. It's just crouch, bind, set. And on set, they just move up a couple of inches. So they're in this position. Okay, they're, it's a bad one. Maybe like this. Yeah, knees, knees on the ground. Okay, so when they do crouch, bind, set, all they have to do is lift their knees off the floor a couple of inches. So that they're in. this position. But if all eight knees, so eight knees of the second row forwards are on the ground. So if you can imagine you're, you're, you're four and five and then six and seven are all next to each other. Okay, that's four bodies all next to each other. And all they do together on set is just lift their knees three inches off the ground, all at the same time. Crouch, bind, set, boom. And what your front row, your front row obviously have got a bit more adjusting because they're going crouch, bind, and then there's a lot of that movement that we spoke about earlier where, where their foot position was, um, the left foot and the right foot, they've got to move their feet a little bit. Um, but it gives your, your loose head and your tight head prop, um, you know, step, one, two. Right, boom, boom, and they're in the right position. And these guys haven't disturbed what's happening at the front of the of their bodies and the back end of the, the front row forward. They've just moved up six inches and they haven't moved forward or backwards. They may have a little bit of movement forward on the hip because of the engage, because the front row moves forward a little bit. So your second row move, might move forward and then you go from that 12 o'clock, remember, to now maybe 11 o'clock, they might move forward a little bit, but it should be minimal, okay? It should be minimal. Um, so if we can get them to do that, just move up three inches, because the opposite of that is, for example, if you have someone, um, and you see this a lot across four, five, six, and seven, it can be very different for each person. If you allow the guys to set up like this, for example, you might have a guy that's on his knees, it's the body and the head, okay? Um, it's not even worse. It's, in reality, it's probably something like this. It's a horrible position to be in for a second row forward because all of what you've got to do is crouch, crouch, bind. He's got his head stuck in someone's backside. Um, if you do crouch, bind, and set, then this person's got to take this foot, put it somewhere back here. Hopefully, it's in the right place, somewhere parallel. So the other foot and that knee's got to come down 
and the ass has got to go up and all of a sudden you've spent a lot of move you've done a lot of movement and everything's out of sync but imagine if you've got your flanks doing the same thing this is the number five you've got the four doing the same thing and you've got the seven doing the same thing well you've got all of a sudden you've got one ass up here one ass down there another one up there another one down here and you've got legs all over the place and there's no symmetry there's no synchronization in the second row forward so if you could just get everybody four four five six and seven to just lift be all set on the knees all eight knees on the ground and just move up on set three inches boom everybody's in the same place nothing moves at the front the front row will have to adjust their feet so that they're no longer in this position. You remember your hooker is in that position in, in the front row next to him. They're gonna, they're gonna put their, their feet back a little bit. So it might adjust a little bit here, but it's not these guys that are making that adjustment. That's just, it's the front row making their adjustment. You guys are just, second row guys have just moved up three inches. So that one, a little bit complicated to explain. Um, it might be good if I can get a video of that because uh, a friend of mine actually explained that very well on TV uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, Saracens are using it really well. Um, they kind of, this, the Saracens coach kind of um, took that to the next level. Um, so yeah, it's basically to get all of these guys in sync so that we don't have this situation where your second row forwards are all at different heights because they've had to make all of that, that knee motion if they're all on what one's on one knee, the other one's on two knees, you know, that everyone's in their own little comfort zone. No, get rid of that. Put everybody in the same zone. And it's just every especially the second row forwards, the big long legs, and you've got to start to get your cleats out of the grass, move the leg out of the way, get your knee down, then get up. No, it's a waste of time. So we start all on our knees for on the floor, all eight knees of the second row forwards on the floor, and you simply move them up a couple of inches. Okay, so <coughs> excuse me, the cadence cadence side of things should look something like this so really simple at the beginning right the referee's calling crouch bind set our reaction to set is simply all of those eight knees getting off the floor at the same moment crouch bind set knees up your front row might need to go step step to adjust and then we physically and verbally squeeze and physically and verbally move one, two, three steps. Yeah, so it should be something like this: crouch, bind, set. That's the knees up, ball in. Excuse me, crouch, bind, set, knees up, step, step, ball in, and then squeeze one, two, three. Physically and verbally squeezing and moving one, two, three. But we want to verbalize this, so the hooker needs to be leading that. So again, crouch, bind, set, knees off the ground, small adjustment, step, step, ball comes in and we squeeze one, two, three. And that's led by the hooker and maybe the eight man if they need something from the back as well.